All right, so I've been meaning to make a video about this little lamp here for quite a while now, and you probably wonder why I even bother with what is obviously a small solid state practice amp. And I get it, but I promise there's at least one very decent reason behind this apparent stupidity. So let's first address the obvious. Yes, this is one of Laney's many attempts at, okay, let's just get something that makes a sound wired up, stick it into something we can shape into a box, might as well use cardboard and give it a shitty 8 inch speaker, there you go, that's an amp. And if you can find some stupid teenager that is willing to pay 40 extra bucks for a reverb tank, we'll make a reverb version. And yeah, that's how I got my first amp. And that is it, okay? Granted, this thing is built like a fucking bulldozer, because Dude, it's taken two decades of unspeakable abuse. It's been on the back of pickup trucks, some rooftops, it's been under the rain, soaked in beer and homemade liquor, probably puke, maybe even piss. I don't know. It's been tossed, dropped, kicked. I blew out the power stage twice. My fault, not the amps. And yet, it doesn't even have a scratchy pot. So it's got that go in it for it. But. Still, I mean, I got a Les Paul traditional here, which by all known measures should sound like, you know, epic glories of ancient past and killing dragons, but... It sounds like a cheap solid state amp, because that is what it is. It sounds what it looks like, and it just can't help it. Doesn't matter what guitar you, you put through it, it sounds like that. And if we turn on the I Wanna Be A Marshall channel, well... Still sounds like a cheap solid state amp, because it is what it is. Now, the real reason behind this thing, and the reason I believe we can learn a lot about this little thing here in a minute, is... After all these years, despite all the tubes and expectancy of guitars and digital technology in my grasp and lots of pedals and shit, I keep getting dragged back this thing. I, it just... I want to play it. There's something fun and interesting about it. And for example, it, it does clean up quite well. It responds to pick and attack wonderfully. Not even messing with the volume, it's just... That's the I Wanna Be A Marshall channel, and it sounds... It's probably not my right, but uh, trust me, despite all the boxing ass, and if you listen behind the cardboard sound, it has a rich content, it does have, have nice dynamics, it cleans up nicely, so I want to open it up. I want to find out what makes this amp special and what can be learned about it, so that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, so I went on ahead, got this thing open. I looked at the schematic, by the way, which is gonna be in the description down below with some other stuff for nerds like myself to go on and have fun. And I got my little testing setup here. There's the oscilloscope, there's a signal generator, which is producing a sine wave at 440 hertz. That's an A, by the way, in case you want to tune your, your guitar. And it goes straight into the amp, right? Looking at the board, there's nothing remarkable here. It's a single layer PCB, you got your usual suspects, this is a TL072, which is what you find on pretty much any single solid state amp, I mean. It's on at least half the pedals out there. And it's a dual op amp. It's cl two clean stages. Signal goes in and comes out louder, but clean. Same thing on the other side, comes in, comes out louder, but clean, and then it goes into the power stage. Power stage is a TDA-2030, which is what you find on Marshall MGs, Orange Crushes, stuff like that. It's pretty much everywhere. And that is a full clean channel, and that's what it does. It's pure clean tone. That's what you'd expect on the clean channel of a solid state amp. Now there's also the I Wanna Be A Marshall channel, which does this. That's distortion. Now, how are we producing distortion here? And that's where it gets interesting, because ignore this TL072, that's for the reverb. We got no op amps left, and there's no transistors, and there's no diodes, and there's no clipping LEDs. There's nothing. The only thing you have here, and what makes this amp so fucking interesting, is this. This is a CD4069. The sort of six logic gates. They're inverters. You give it a zero, it gives you a one. You give it a one, it gives you a zero. So zero volts, it gives you five or near five. You give it somewhere around five, it's gonna give you a zero. So if you give it a sine wave, it's gonna be turning on and off. That's gonna be a square wave. That's gonna sound like shit, but that's the way digitally intended devices work. Unless you get clever around them and create some 
feedback networks here, which I'm not gonna go into details. You got the schematic if you want, and you make it work like an audio amplifier and not any audio amplifier. Each and every one of the four gates used on this circuit work as two transistors in tandem. You get two field effect transistors, which by the way, work pretty much the same thing as a tube, only that instead of a grid, a cathode and a nanode, you have your drain, source and gate, but they're basically the same thing in principle. So you get two in tandem and you get them working in push-pull configuration. You get basically the same thing as you'd have on a B or A, B class amplifier with tubes. And that's where it gets awesome. And that's what we're gonna test right fucking now. Testing, testing, one, two. Okay, so we have a test signal that's a 440 hertz sine wave, about 0.2 volts peak to peak. So let me first quickly go through the clean channel. Okay, so on the input of the first op amp, we have that exact same signal, that's the sine wave, and on the output, as expected, a larger signal, which if I zoom out, you can see that it's a perfectly clean sine wave. Now, this is where clean and dirty channels part ways, but I'm going to go along and continue with the clean channel on the output of this op amp, the, the second side of the op amp, turn up the volume, yes, a much, much larger sine wave. Boring. Let's go straight into the I want to be a Marshall channel. This is what interests us. See? Distortion. So, this exact same sine wave is going into that part of the circuit, the, where we have this logic gates. So, on the input of the first logic gate, though a bit attenuated, we see that there's a sine wave. That's because of the feedback network. Well, you can look at the schematic if you want, but on the output of that gate, if theory checks out, we should have audio. And what do you know? Yep, checks out exactly. We have a sine wave out of a logic gate. That's great, but that's not the whole story. Let's jump to the output of this, the second logic gate. On the output of the second logic gate, now I have gain available, and I'm gonna turn it up a little bit, and you're gonna see that, yeah, exactly that. We have an amplified sine wave that we're controlling with the gain. If I keep going up, it keeps getting bigger because, you know, we're trying to achieve distortion here. So let me zoom out again. That's one volt per division. That's a lot. And if I keep going up, keep going up, keep going up. There, you see how the top is starting to flatten? That is distortion. So that's big already. We're achieving distortion by using a logic gate as an audio amplifier. That's great, but Pay, pay a little bit more attention. You see how it's soft on the top? That is soft clipping. And not only that, the bottom still resembles a sine wave. So not only do we have amplification and soft clipping using logic gates, we have asymmetrical distortion. That is huge. See how it keeps getting more and more pronounced? And here, that's all the game. And it's still a beautiful, very round type of distortion. It's asymmetrical and it's very soft. That is what you expect to see on a tube amp. And we're achieving that in solid state. And we don't only have that gate, there's two more to go. So let me just jump to after to, to the output of the fourth gate. And I'll do this again. I'm gonna increase the gain. And this is the result of the first gate that was completely clean plus three distorted gates. Again, we're starting to get larger and larger signal and see, again, it starts to flatten on the top, but now, I don't know if it's scaring out with, with this screen capture, but it doesn't have the same shape. When the top starts to, to flatten, the bottom starts to get weird as well. And if I keep going, you can see that it's still soft clipping, it's still asymmetrical, but the shape is a little bit different because this is the combination of cascading all the gates. And that is what great amps do when they want to achieve a lot of distortion. You don't just chop the heads and the bottoms off with LEDs or diodes, Marshall. You, you go gentle, you go smart, you just slightly start to distort over and over again until you, like, I don't want to use any more cliches, but you start crafting a sound. You start like, I don't know, shaping the wave and see how this thing, I keep giving it gain and it struggles to, to go into square wave territory. Even there where it pretty much looks like a square, the edges are really round, really nice. And 
I mean, th if this is what you expect to see on a great tube amp, well, how does this actually sound? Because I believe a lot of small lamps, even solid state ones, don't get a fair, fair trial. Because, you know, when you're gonna cut costs, the easy way to go is cabinet and of course the speaker, but that's what hurts you the most. So I wonder, how does this amp really sound? If we give it a bigger box and better speakers. So that's what I wanna hear right now. Okay, so I guess now it's time to see if all that nerd babble was worth shit. So I got the exact same settings I had before. This is the amp. You're hearing the I Wanna Be a Marshall channel, which is the interesting one. And now I'm gonna get the headphone output because it's the only output that it has. It's, I know this is not ideal. And I'm sending it into the big box back there. Oh, all right. And I'm plugged into the loops, effects loop return, the volume really low so that I know that I'm not pushing the, the power valves. We're all, we're just hearing this thing do its, its thing. So here we go. This is gonna be good. Okay. <laughs> Shared everything I played. I was not expecting that. Just that little lamp, that box over there. It's just. I don't even know if my shitty mic is getting carried through YouTube's compression. I I don't care. It's just like, and I can't wait for some fucking asshole with fifteen thousand posts on whatever internet forum to just come and tell me that I didn't carry my test properly and this is all placebo effect because I'm nostalgic about how many times I got drunk and passed out next to the thing, which were way more than should have, but I digress. Um, there you go, that's 
that's what solid state can do if you give it a chance. What, what's gonna haunt me forever is uh, why the hell don't they do practice stamps like this one anymore? Why they like the orange crosses and the beehive of Marshall MGs? Like they're rehoused shitty generic distortion pedals. I mean, look at the schematics. I might even leave some on the description just to prove a point. They're shitty fucking circuits. They're lazy designs. They just stick a couple of LEDs, they chop everything and they. They're shitty generic pedals. And this thing, I mean, maybe the reason is it's not money, because this is not more expensive to make than those. Because at least not the circuits. That, that I know for sure. The only thing I can think of is they want you to, once you, I don't know, get bored. Once, once you learn what to listen for, you just get bored and get something else, more expensive. I, that's the only reason I can think of, because well, I know this thing, I'm gonna play it till I die. But I can't get off this thing, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go back to this whole, like, I gotta cut this thing at some point, but I'm just gonna keep having fun. Fuck yourself, this is something. <laughs> I gotta finish this. I... Wow.